Hello, I'm Jim Hintz, the president of the association serving Alto Cayma. We're speaking to you today from the Jim Catapano Community Center, which is our center of operations here in the heart of Alto Cayma. Alto Cayma is a relatively new settlement that has sprung up on the outskirts of the city of Arequipa over the past 20 years. The settlement is largely populated by people who come in from the less developed areas of the country, hoping to make a better life for themselves and their families here in the city. Alto Cayma currently has over 45,000 people and more are coming every day. Their transition to life in the city is a very difficult one to make because they lack the education and the job skills necessary to get a good job in the city economy. Consequently, they're relegated to uh, performing as day laborers doing manual labor for very low wages and they continue to live in poverty. The key for the next generation to break out of the cycle of poverty that has entrapped their parents and grandparents is of course education. Almost all the kids in Alto Cayma do finish high school but then they encounter a chasm that they must somehow be able to cross before they can continue their studies at the next level. Juan Quispe is a young man who knows all about that. Juan is a medical student who, when he took the uh, exam to enter the university, got the highest grade of any of the applicants. But that was only after he had struggled for two years and taken and failed the exam multiple times. Juan, Juan why did it take you so long to achieve your goal of entering the university? Why didn't you enter directly out of high school? Cuando salí del colegio, eh, postulé, ni bien terminé el colegio y me di cuenta I went to a public high school. When I finished my high school studies, I immediately applied to enter the university. But I noticed after taking the test that all the knowledge that we were given at the school wasn't enough. I realized that I had to find a way to prepare myself with all the missing items. I had to study at an academy. I was in the academy for almost two years before I succeeded in getting into the university. Are there other factors that contribute to the lack of preparation of students as they come out of high schools here? En este punto nos damos cuenta que son varios los factores. No hay no hay alguien que tiene la culpa, son varios. Si queremos verlo así, en un caso serían los mismos estudiantes. At this point, there is no one to blame specifically. There are many factors. For instance, students themselves. The teachers are not really demanding. Parents, as they haven't got much education, don't care either. They just sign the reports and students don't give their best. Y bueno, el alumno generalmente no tampoco pone su parte, como no se le exige, él tampoco da, da lo mínimo e indispensable y y así están los resultados, ¿no? The majority of students here go to public schools. How is education in Alto Cayma? In my case, I have studied at a parochial public school, where we were given religious content too. It is different from private schools, and also different from downtown schools, where they care a little bit more. Here, education is not demanding for students. We are also given poor academic content. You mentioned the academy. What exactly is an academy? Academies are private institutions where you go after finishing high school to get the knowledge you need to apply for university studies. It is a very unique situation as you don't find this kind of institution worldwide. In other countries, the process to access university is much easier. You just fill documents and apply. Here, you have to fight to enter as there are limited vacancies. That's why you have to prepare yourself very hard. Academies profit from the poor educational system in Peru. They are supposed to give you all the preparation in a very short period of time that high school did not give you during five years. Juan Quispe has identified very clearly the chasm I referred to earlier which acts as a barrier to prevent the students of Alto Cayma from achieving their educational goals. There's an educational gap which can be bridged by study in an academy, 
but that in itself presents an economic gap which the students of Alto Caima can't overcome without outside help. It was for this purpose that the Bridge to Opportunity program was created. My late wife, Gloria, was all about giving opportunity to the people of Alto Caima. And her friends created the Bridge to Opportunity program as a memorial to her. Even as she was struggling with terminal cancer, Gloria participated actively in the design of this program. The Bridge to Opportunity program covers the cost of preparing in an academy until a student is able to enter the university. A typical student might require eight months of preparation in an academy at a cost of $125 a month, or a total cost of $1,000 per student. The program includes several requirements which the student must fulfill, including a meeting with the student and their parents in order to uh, reach an agreement how we can work as a team to support the student, participation in a vocational orientation program offered by Angelica Sanchez, our psychologist, and an academic orientation program offered by Juan Quispe, whom you've heard from, participation in the activities of the Salir Adelante program, a sponsorship program of which Bridge to Opportunity is a subset, maintaining close contact with Lydia Pizarro, uh, the manager of our uh, Bridge to Opportunity and Salir Adelante programs, so that she can monitor their progress and give them adequate guidance. And finally, membership in one of our service clubs for young people, either Interact or Rotaract, according to their age, to instill in them the ethic of service. We're now going to hear from st four students who are, who are enrolled in the Bridge to Opportunity program. Their stories will clearly bring out the talent that these young people have, but will also show how that talent would be wasted if we didn't have the Bridge to Opportunity program there to support them. We're going to begin with Isabel Aguilar. Good afternoon, Isabel. Good afternoon, Mr. Jim. Tell us something about your family. We are five sisters. I am the third. We live with my mom, as my dad doesn't live with us, nor does he give us support. With no support from your father, how do you live? My mom sometimes works doing ironing, and we live as caretakers of a house. We get our lunch from Father Alex Community Kitchen. Tell us something about your studies in high school. I went to a public primary school close to home, but for high school, because of the lack of money, I went to live in a children's shelter and did my studies there. Then I went to a private school for the last year. And how did it go in your studies? How did you end up? I did my best and came out in first place and graduated with honors. It's because you were such an outstanding student that we chose you to be the first person to receive aid in our Bridge to Opportunity program. And how did it go for you in the academy? I did pretty well. I was there for three months and then I entered law school at San Agustin University. Well, and thus you were the first person also to graduate from the Bridge to Opportunity program. Now you're a law student at the National University. By the way, how old are you? I am 17 years old. 17. And what are your aspirations for the future? Well, I want to be a good lawyer and help society through my profession. We're going to continue with Alonso Valdivia. Good afternoon, Alonso. Good afternoon, Mr. Jim. How old are you? 17. You had a difficult childhood. Tell us what happened in your family. Éramos una familia de cinco. Mi papá, mi mamá y tres hermanos, incluyéndome yo. We were a family of five. Mom, dad, my brothers and I. My dad was an alcoholic and abused my mom. That's why she decided to get out of the house and took my brothers and I to live outside. Well, 
It was very hard, and we had to sell candies to feed ourselves. It did not work out. My mom gave us rat poison mixed with some food. Thank God, a lady noticed that we were getting awfully sick and took us to the hospital, where we recovered. We were going to die. After that, my mom sent us to the judicial office and we were sent to the sacred family village, a foster home where Father Frank was the director. He was into sports and was our coach. He made us win the championship in the villages. But then, in 2012, he died and we lost the championship in 2013. So, in 2013, you finished high school with excellent grades and we chose you for the Bridge to Opportunity program. And what are you doing now? Presently, I am preparing myself at an academy. I want to study environmental engineering. And what are your aspirations for that career and for your future? I want to bring up my family, help them as much as I can and give them all the best as my parents couldn't do for us. I also want to support my foster home, the place where I grew up. We're going to continue with Gisela Yayakachi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Jim. How old are you? 17. Please tell us about your childhood. My mom died of a stroke died of a stroke when I was six years old. My dad died a year later from alcoholism. My younger siblings and I were sent to the Sacred Family Village, a foster home where Father Frank took care of us. My older brothers were not there, but went to visit us on the weekends. It was a very sad time as I missed my parents so much. But thank God, we were given love and good care. I devoted myself to study, so right now I am at an academy. Now you finished high school with good grades and you're in the Bridge to Opportunity program. Tell us about your studies. Yes, I'm studying at the academy, preparing myself to enter the university. I want to study psychology and be a great professional. And what are your aspirations for the future? I want to be the best in my profession. I want to help other people, especially my little sister, supporting her studies. And I also want to help the Sacred Family Foster Home, where I lived since I was six years old. And finally, we're going to speak to Jubit Sakayo. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Jim. How old are you? I am 17 years old. Tell us a little bit about your family. My family is a large one. I have four siblings. My parents are separated. We have lived with my stepfather for almost 10 years. He is a good man, unlike a father to us. But it is difficult to live in such a small house without many people. There is not enough money. 
but thank God we have our own land. I am very grateful for the support I was given. What has been your greatest challenge coming out of high school? My greatest difficulty was to choose a career. I've done a vocational test, which has helped me very much. I've talked with many people, I've listened to suggestions, but then I got a bit confused. But in the end, have you made a decision? Yes, I want to study nursing at San Agustin University. What aspect of your participation in Bridged Opportunity have you enjoyed the most? Belonging to Interact, there I was elected Vice President. I am turning 18 in November and I want to enter Rotaract to continue the program and to help my community. To keep the Bridged Opportunity program going year after year and make it available to each graduating class, we need a constant influx of new donations. At an average cost of $1,000 per student, we need at least $10,000 a year to even be able to help 10 students. If anyone can donate $1,000 to sponsor a student, that's great, but smaller donations can also be pooled to achieve the same objective. Tax-deductible donations can be made to Dilworth Charities with Bridge to Opportunity on the memo line of the check. Your generosity will open the doors of opportunity to some deserving student and change their lives forever.